Lawrence, and today we're at Fred Lawrence Whipple Observatory. Behind me is the Veritas Gamma Ray Telescope, but today we're going to be taking a tour of the MMT. I have with me Dr. Grant Williams, Director of the Observatory. We're currently at the base camp of Whipple Observatory, and we're about to head up the mountain to see the MMT. the summit of Mount Hopkins at the MMT Observatory, which is behind me. The MMT was dedicated in 1979, and at the time that telescope had six 1.8 meter mirrors on a common mount to have a total collecting area of four and a half meters in diameter. So that made it the third largest telescope in the world. It was a very innovative telescope at the time, including the enclosure you see behind me. Um, for most telescopes, you have a base and a dome that rotates at the top. But for the MMT, in order to keep costs down, there was a decision made to make the whole enclosure rotate with the telescope. Um, that's a design that is now propagated onto many larger telescopes. Over there, the concrete is the foundation, the part that does not rotate, and then everything above that rotates with the telescope, including these metal pieces here, which are snow plows. So if we get any accumulation of snow here, they help move the snow out of the way of the rotating building. The original multiple mirror telescope was decommissioned in 1998 in order to put a new telescope into the same building. The mirror for the six and a half meter MMT was cast in 1992 in the Stewart, Stewart Observatory Mirror Lab. And at the time it was cast, was the largest mirror that had ever been cast. Finally, we have an image of the mirror being put into the new telescope. This was in 1999. You can see the mirror being lifted up into the telescope. Um, mirrors don't have lifting points and so the only way to lift up a big mirror like this is to use vacuum chucks, put them on the surface of the mirror and suck the mirror up and then lift the mirror up using just vacuum and lower it into the telescope. Okay, now we're inside the telescope enclosure um, on the main observing floor. The blue structure behind me is the yoke, and that was part of the original multiple mirror telescope. When the old telescope was taken out and the new telescope was put in, um, the new telescope was slightly larger, so the dome was expanded out a little bit in order to fit the new telescope in, but it's still a very compact structure. The old telescope was taken out in 1998 to make room for the new six and a half meter telescope. This was commissioned in 2000. We have a six and a half meter primary mirror that works with three different secondary mirrors. We have an F9 secondary mirror, which matches the focal ratio of the original telescope so that we could use instruments from the original telescope with the new telescope. We have an F5 secondary, which is a very large secondary mirror. That large secondary mirror provides a very wide field of view, so it allows us to see a large area of the sky at once. And then we have an F15 secondary mirror, that's an adaptive secondary mirror, so it actually changes its shape. In fact, it changes its shape at about 550 times a second to take out the effects of the Earth's atmosphere, to take out the twinkle in the stars. We can mount about 12 different instruments on the MMT. They mount on this flange up here that has a big gear. That's actually a rotator. Um, for, for telescopes like the MMT, which are alt-as telescopes, they move in elevation and azimuth. And so the field that you're viewing rotates around. In order to take that rotation out, the rotator rotates the instrument out to keep the field fixed relative to the instrument. So the instrument mounted on the telescope now, the instrument behind me is called ARIES. It's a near-infrared imager and spectrograph. The instrument has two different sides, which are different colors, green and purple. There's an imaging side, and then there's a spectrograph side. A spectrograph disperses the light into its different colors so that you can study the astronomical objects. ARIES is a very powerful instrument that uses our adaptive secondary mirror, so the secondary mirror that takes the twinkle out of the star, producing a very crisp image. The instrument is often used to study extrasolar planets, so planets that are orbiting around other stars outside of our solar system. We also have a very powerful instrument 
which is called Hectospec. Um, it's a multi-object fiber-fed spectrograph. So there's 300 fibers inside that instrument, and those fibers can be positioned on the focal surface with two robots in the course of five minutes. Those robots place the fibers at the positions of stars or galaxies. So the instrument itself is collecting data for 300 different objects at once, up to 300 different objects at once. Soon we'll be getting a new instrument called BinoSpec. It's very much like Hectospec. It's a multi-object spectrograph and imager. Um, but it's more powerful than Hectospec because it's more sensitive. You can study fainter objects with it in shorter amounts of time, but you can also get many, many objects all at once. So now we're in the control room. This is where all the action happens at night. We have many computers along this console here, which are used to operate the telescope and the instrumentation. Um, at the far end of this room, the telescope operator works. Um, in between the telescope operator and the observer, we usually have an instrument operator. And then at this end of the room, we have the observer. The telescope operator and the instrument operator are usually MMT employees, and then the observer is usually somebody that comes in primarily from the University of Arizona or the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory to observe, but we have observers come from all around the world to observe here at the MMT. These displays behind me are showing status information, telescope status, as well as weather status, so that the operators have all the information they need to operate successfully at night. Okay, right from the beginning, the MMT Observatory has been a joint operation between the University of Arizona and the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory. So most of the people who observe at the telescope are from one of those institutions, the University of Arizona and the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, although collaborators come from all over the world to use the telescope. Um, both of those institutions contribute equally to the budget to help operations of the telescope, and so they both get 50% of the time on the telescope.